What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna start actually building out the controllers for our API endpoint. We need users to be able to register. We need users to be able to log in. And in doing so, we need to create our own controller for this. And that's what I'm gonna do. So I am going to go into my controllers folder and I'm just going to call this auth controller. Feel free to name it whatever you want to. And going to go ahead and annotate this with a REST controller attribute because it's a REST controller. And I'm also going to give it a URL of API slash API slash auth. So this will be what our API uh, URL looks like. You can call this whatever you want to, but I think giving it that extra auth right there, um, it allows you to go into your security config and set more uh, precise ant matchers and it also looks cooler i think sometimes looking cool is just a knit part of the game and uh this case we are going to try to look as cool as we can right okay so i'm um, gonna go into here and go into our authentic uh bring in our authentication manager remember we created this spring security pretty much does all of this for us we're also going to bring in our repository so we're going to use um, a couple methods out of here to check if the user exists and we need our repository. And we also need to bring in our uh, role, repos role repository as well too. So we're gonna go to our role repository and also we need to bring in our password encoder. So password, and I'm gonna call this password encoder, just like this. Next is going to create a constructor. So I'm just gonna go in here, click, right click. I'm gonna go to generate. I'm gonna go to, just going to go ahead and highlight all of this and click okay. So that brings in all of that, that's looking good. Also, it kind of looks bad. So I'm going to bring that down right there just so it's a little bit more legible. And I'm also going to bring in my auto wired. So it's probably a better idea to uh, use our register or make our register first just so that we can actually have users to be able to test out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into here, I'm gonna call this post mapping, I'm gonna call this a register endpoint. Then what I'm gonna do is go down here and go response entity. So it's gonna return a response entity and it will return a string. So next, we'll have our register endpoint and a request. And within our request body, because we're sending up actual JSON, you're going to have to send up JSON to the API endpoint because you do not want to send any passwords over um, in our URL string. That's one of the reasons that we actually have that we actually choose to not send stuff over in the form of the URL, because if we do, that would be a huge security risk, so never do that. Okay, so we've got our, next we actually need to create a registered DTO. And by doing that, what I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna go in my DTO folder, gonna go to class and call this register DTO. And within the register DTO, it's gonna be super simple. Also, let's go ahead and annotate this with Lombok because we're probably going to be needing to use getters and setters here in a second. So just get knock that out. And the only thing that we're going to be sending up is going to be our username and our password, just like this. So that's looking good. Um, now we've got our uh, DTO. Okay, so let's go ahead in here and start building this thing out. So Obviously, one of the first things that you always want to do when you create a register endpoint is you want to make sure you want to do a little bit of validation. And this is why we created the exist by username. And um, what we're going to do is check to see if this username exists. And if it doesn't, if it does exist in the database, it will give us an error saying that the username is already taken. So I'll go here and we're going to check the username. And after we check the username, if the username does exist in the database, that is not what we want. And if it does exist, then we're going to return a new response entity. So return a new response entity. We'll say username is taken, exclamation mark. And then we will return 
a HTTP bad request to let the user know that that was indeed a bad request. Okay, so if it doesn't exist, then what we need to do is we actually need to create the user entity. And in doing so, we'll just new up a user entity real quick. So we'll go user is equal to new user entity. And then, so we brought that in already. So now we need to actually set the actual value. So here, so we have user, we're gonna set our username and within here, what we're gonna do is we're going to set it to what we passed up in the actual API endpoint. Makes sense. But our password is gonna be a little bit different. So we need to set our password, but remember we can't store uh, data in plain text. So what we need to do is we need to encode this password. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna encode our password and we will go ahead here and toss in our registered DTO. So we use our get password right here. And that's why we have our password encoder. So when it actually stores it, it doesn't store it in plain text. Now we need to um, worry, so to speak, about our roles. And what I'm going to do is just for now, anybody that actually logs in, I'm just going to go ahead and set them with user. And what you would want to do is if you wanted to have actual admin rights or you wanted a specific user to actually be an admin, you would add some type of custom logic here on your own. But you can definitely add an admin, but I'm just going to make anybody who registers through this register endpoint a user because I think that makes a lot more sense. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go find by name, which remember we, cre we created all of these repository endpoints and Go in here, we'll give this a user. Then we go get, just like this, and user dot set role. So here, and we're going to set the roles within the actual user. So what does this actually mean right here? What this means is that we're, we've, we're creating a user entity, remember? And in order for us to be able to save these roles, we need to set the roles for the user, just like we would everything else. It's just a little bit more involved and it's an actual object as opposed to a primitive type. So here we're gonna go singleton and we're gonna turn this into a singleton list of roles. Then after that, okay, so that looks good. Then this is when we're finally gonna be able to do what we wanted to like all along. There's a lot to get to this one point, but after this, we're going to be able to save it. Then we're going to return new response entity and we will have user registered success just like that and we're going to return an http status of okay okay so that looks pretty much it i was testing this beforehand so i am going to go ahead here and go into my user roles and what you want to do is you want to add a role here so if there's no roles you're going to get an error you need to make sure that you have have actual roles within your database so first we need to go here and I am going to go add. So I'm gonna go ahead, add a role and I'm going to give one admin. So I'll give one admin and let's see, so that looks good. And then you need to click this little submit button right here to actually uh, put it in the database. Then I'm going to add a user. So go here and then I'm going to add a user. And remember, if you don't do this, it's not going to work. It's going to give you an error. So make sure that you uh, make sure to pay attention and to actually uh, do this part. Also, um, getting an error here. I got a red squiggly line. Okay, so that looks pretty much it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. Oh, also, I forgot. I think I forgot one thing. We need to add an ant matcher for our actual API endpoint. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to hit the API endpoint because it will not work. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is go into ant matchers, go into here, and instead of this, what I'm going to do, since we actually have an actual endpoint, I'm going to go here off and I'm going to give this a API auth star star so that both our login and our register. So anything within this AP, uh, auth endpoint will work. Then after that, uh, what I'm gonna do is 
make sure that it's any request. So any request, let me see here, ant matchers, oh, here, and I'm gonna say permit all. So any request that goes through this API auth endpoint should work. And we want it that way because people need to be able to log in anonymously and register anonymously. Otherwise, we how are we going to authenticate if the whole entire thing's locked down, so to speak? Okay, so go ahead, I'm running it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get out Postman. <clears throat> I've already went in and created this. So I've created another folder here. I've created another folder under my Pokemon Review API collection. Uh, go ahead, add another folder. I would, you don't have to do this, and name it authentication. Then what you wanna do, add another endpoint. So add another endpoint within your authentication folder and type in the HTTP localhost 8080 API auth register and pass in JSON through the body raw form JSON right here. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this should work. I'm getting nervous here. So, and registered success. We've also got our users and our roles table. If you look down here, we win it. Uh, we actually saw the SQL execute. So let's just, just to double, double check to make sure that everything went through correctly. I'm just gonna go here and I'm going to go edit data. Our password works. Thank the, thank the good Lord. Cause I, I honestly was becoming really nervous because making these API endpoints, our role works, our, uh, user IDs, our many to many table is working. Our roles, our role is working. Now we can go ahead and create our login endpoint. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. See you in the next video when we actually create the login endpoint.